now known as the Galleries, a shopping outlet in the centre of Bristol that once stood one of England's oldest prisons. Originally built in 1148, it was part of a gate attached to the wall protecting Bristol Castle, giving the prison its name, Newgate. This map is dated 1250, a hundred years later when the River Froome was diverted to act as a defensive moat around the castle, flowing past the prison. Today the river lies underground. Francis Greenway, who is known for being Australia's first government architect, was a prisoner here and was responsible for the design of many well-known buildings, including the St James Church in Sydney and the Clifton Club in Bristol, which is the only remaining building of his standing in the UK. The Clifton Club has a long history of elite membership, with the Society of Merchant Venturers using it as a meeting place still to this day. Francis was born in Mangotsfield, on the outskirts of Bristol, and in 1809 he became bankrupt and through desperation forged a financial document and was sentenced to death by the courts. The sentence was later reduced to 14 years with having to relocate to Australia where he would design buildings still regarded as a convict. Francis spent his time as a prisoner at Newgate before he was deported to Australia in 1814. Francis died in 1837 of typhoid, which is ironic having been surrounded by so many infectious diseases at Newgate Prison. His face was depicted on the first ever $10 Australian note. Another notable prisoner was Richard Savage, an English poet and satirist. Richard was the illegitimate son of Anne, Countess of Macclesfield, and Richard Savage, the fourth Earl of Rivers, who was once the governor of the Tower of London. Before Richard came to Newgate Prison, he was condemned to death for murder by stabbing in 1727, but was pardoned with the assistance of the Countess of Hartford and Queen Caroline, the wife of King Richard II. Richard was living on a small pension granted by the Queen, but it was revoked after her death, and Richard was sent to Newgate for being in debt of £8, approximately £950 in today's money. Richard died at Newgate, supposedly of liver failure from drinking. Newgate Prison became known for having the worst conditions in England. The building was too small to hold the number of prisoners, meaning many cellmates had to share their beds or having to sleep on floors, with the risk of being bitten by mice or rats. Men and women were not always separated, and one area of the prison that was essentially a dungeon was named the Pit, eight steps under the building. The Pit was 17 feet wide with a small high up window. Beds were either made up of straw or dirt, and 17 prisoners slept in the pit every night. John Wesley, who was the leader of the Methodist movement within the Church of England, visited the prison and described the conditions as being as bad, if not worse, than London's own Newgate prison. John said the stench and the wickedness and the misery shocked all that had any spark of humanity left. As a form of punishment, convicts could be crushed to death whipped into a consciousness or left to bleed out. Public torture and execution were techniques often used by the prison system. Newgate's exercise yard was known as the tennis court and was 12 metres wide and 6 metres long and had a bath in it which was very rarely used. If you were sentenced here as a debtor that was unable to pay a court order judgment you would be held prisoner until the debt was paid off either by hard labour or from an outside fund to pay the balance off. Hard labour included breaking stones as a man or as a woman, sewing and washing. Debtors were made to pay two shillings and six pence per room each week for their time spent at the prison. That's around 12 pence today. If you were sentenced as a deserter, then the chances are you didn't have anyone local to rely on for donations, so prisoners would often starve to death or suffered from malnutrition. The official food allowance for people sentenced as a felon was a small loaf of white bread of around 600 grams. Debtors were not allowed a food allowance so they had to rely on the donations or presents from families and friends who lived locally. A collection box which hung outside of the prison was used for people to donate to the prisoners but gifts were few and far between. 
Newgate was rife with disease and there was no effort in rehabilitating the prisoners. Sometimes diseases would be spread out from the prison and into the nearby regions of Bristol. In 1820, because of its failing condition, Newgate Jail was finally abandoned and demolished not long after. The new jail on the River Avon was built in its replacement. In 1991, what we now know as the Gallery Shopping Centre and its car park was built on the site of the jail. The opening ceremony was delivered by the then Lord Mayor, Kathleen Mount Stephen, whose name is misspelled on the commemorative plaque as you walk into the galleries. A time capsule was buried beneath the plaque, filled with items donated by Harcliffe Secondary School. It is unknown when the capsule will be unearthed or what is inside. After a financial recession, a group of investors known as the Mal Company rebranded the building to be known as the Mal Bristol. But in 2011, it was then sold to HSBC for £50 million and the name was changed back to the galleries. The shopping centre has seen a decline in business, especially since the building of a bigger shopping outlet not far from here, with many shops liquidating and closing, giving the place an eerie and sombre atmosphere. As you walk around the gallery's car park, which runs under and beside the building, you can almost sense the feeling of the pit and the fettered conditions that the prisoners went through. Sometimes I imagine one of the poor prisoners having a fever dream about the future, involving them walking through TK Maxx in their torn and filthy rags, grabbing at the brightly coloured knitwear in amazement, or sitting in the food market, staring at the Burger King menu, comparing their 600 gram piece of bread to a flame grilled burger with fries. Next time you park your car here or visit one of the shops, Take a moment to imagine what it was like to be held as a prisoner here. You might get a whiff of the old sewage system, or the sound of tiny claws scurrying over your feet, or you might just be in Greg's 